All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, before the video starts, I do wanna talk about something really quick. I talked to Robert Kraft. He reached out because he loved uh, the honest review video that I did or unboxing, whatever you wanna call it. Now, today I'm gonna show you a few more things on it out in the field, but he also shared with me a tip. So, if you take two of the, the jumpers or the leads, Let's say you wanna jump out something without the actual Jumper King box, the jumper box. You can uh, use these little holes that I told you about. I didn't realize that they're the size of the tips here. So you can actually make your own jumper with this. So you can uh, you know, hook up one of these clips and then uh, get to your 24 volts jumped out then you need to add another jumper let's say you need to pierce something or whatever you can get that so then you would have the pierced jumped out to the main alligator clip there and then that's also jumped over here so essentially you have a three-way jumper there without using the box if you just need to quickly jump something out you can piggyback these. So that was a cool little tip that Robert Kraft gave me, the uh, inventor of the Jumper King. And uh, also, so the magnets, uh, there's a chance that I have a defective one or one that's not sitting right because he said they should be a lot stronger. So, I mean, I thought that was kind of weird because they're doubled up and uh, you would think it wouldn't slide. So they're going to look into that, investigate that. And then uh, the case, they're actively working on it. So they're, they're looking to improve upon feedback, you know, things like that. So uh, they're looking for a better way to, to kind of hold all these tips and everything so that they don't fall out. Uh, not a huge issue, as you can see, they're, those are even upside down. They're not falling out, um, not really on their own, but every now and then one will pop out. So, you know, they're looking to improve all that kind of stuff and then, uh, you know, they're, they're listening to people. So I just want to share that before the video started. And now I'm going to show you how I used it on two different scenarios. Well, actually maybe three. There's going to be a service call that I used it on. There's going to be a maintenance call that I used it on. And, and then I, I, I'm actually making a training board that you'll see right now. And I'm going to use a couple of components that are I know that are shorted out and we're going to see if this helps us pick it up quicker I'm just going to demonstrate it real quick so you know watch that and then uh, make your decision So let's open this up real quick. All right, you know, first let me get a reading before I mess with anything. That's not really moving. Oh, there it goes, 85. Real quick, so on the board we do have R2 common, which is giving us 26, 27 volts. And then if we are calling, we are not. Okay. Let me just make sure these have pressure and then we'll we'll bypass everything up here and then what, what's gonna end up happening is probably just the thermostat gave out because we do have uh, 24 volts. It doesn't take batteries or anything. It's, it's just the 24 volts here should be supplying it. Let's also check in the blower compartment. So everything is uh, fine there. The belt's a little squeaky. I need to tighten it. But like I said, my main concern is over here. So we're going to put our jumper king 
and that's exactly why I brought it in case it was just a thermostat we can jump it out make sure the unit's working and I can go down and just do the thermostat all right so I just have with me like a basic uh, meter right here so I can't it's an auto one I can't switch it to show you the voltage but it's picking up that these are all closed so it's telling me that there's continuity and I check each one just to make sure all my pressure switches are closed all right let me try and jump this out real quick all right, Jumper King, show me what you got. Okay. Fan came on, contactor, compressor came on. All right, so our thermostat is blank. Our pressure switches are closed. We don't have any issue with loss of charge that I can see. Now I'm a long ways from the uh, building inside. I'm at the end over here. Uh, this is where the AC unit is. I have to go all the way to the end over there, uh, down a big ladder, and then walk all the way around this way to get to the, to the corner that I'm in. So we have our uh, Jumper King, thermostat was blank. I just want to verify that we don't have any other issues or short or anything like that. So we hooked it up, two stage cooling. We're gonna energize it, 24 volts here. And then we're just gonna start flipping on our stages. So. Y1 comes on, Y2, so we got our two-stage uh, cooling, and then we're just going to start monitoring our temperature. It's running, it's, it's been good. Now, my opinion on this, it's a cool little tool. It was only, for me, it was only 60 bucks. I don't know if the price went up or not, because they were sell selling out like crazy. So. Uh, 60 bucks to have this little thermostat in your pocket. A little fuse is like, my main concern was that the thermostat was uh, blank. And I was like, let me make sure that nothing is, is uh, shorted out. So, I mean, obviously I want to check with my meter and I found everything fine. But just in case you miss something, this thing has a fuse built in, a resettable fuse. And uh, I don't know, it's just peace of mind, super simple to use. Uh, I just wish the magnets were a little stronger because I always end up having to use the hook. I don't trust it. It's fall fallen on me a few times already, especially with thinner metal. Uh, but you get all the tips. The, the tips are robust. Uh, you know, having the uh, magnets, I've used those before. I haven't used the piercing tips yet, but if you have an area that's cluttered, I don't know, like something like a Lennox or something that's all crazy and maybe the terminal pins it's hard to, to get something on there you can just find the wire down the line pierce it uh, like I said you can dab something over it like silicone if you're worried about it being exposed but it leaves the tiniest hole I don't even think you can see it with your eyes unless you go up to it like right in your face but yeah it's it's and it's simple like it's really cool for new techs if uh, like I said, you can't go wrong. It's If there's a short, this has you covered. If something goes wrong, you can just start turning off stuff. Turn them on one by one if you want to check each stage. Uh, Maintenance-wise, it's really cool to have. I might carry it on my maintenance uh, just because... Not Probably not on this one because summer's already coming up, but on my next maintenance, because it's every six months, uh, that's right before winter. So I can check cooling and heating, just kind of run everything through, stage everything, and then turn on, turn off the compressors, and then turn on the heaters, make sure everything's working. And you can do it all here instead of running down to the thermostat. I mean, if you do residential, you're probably doing that because you don't have something like this. I know newer units probably do, but the ones I've seen don't. We don't have boards in our residential units yet, but. Uh, if you use a jumper, you know, it's the same thing, but this is just, it's kind of cool. So I think we're good. Yeah, we're temping fine. Just make sure the lines are good. There's no frost on the coil. And then I'm going to turn this off, take everything out, close it up. I don't have to come back up to check anything because I verified that the unit was working and then we're just going to go put in that thermostat and call it a day. I don't know if you all understand how much I love this little pouch. Quick, quick checks, 
maintenance bag, all that clipped on the Jumper King to the side, got a strap on it. And uh, damn, it's hot out here. Hot out here. <laughs> That's why they need their cooling. So let's get all this put away and get back or get down to do that thermostat. Man, and this is, this is one of the dirtiest or yeah, dirtiest routes I've been on. Uh, there are so many contractors up here, a lot of disconnected drains. There's a bunch of debris back there. Everybody just leaves a mess, but I only have one little corner for two, two units. So I don't deal with, I see it, it bothers me, but I don't deal with it. Uh, so yeah, they have a sensor, but I'm not going to worry about it because where they have the thermostat, it's in the back and that is the back AC. So I'm just going to put in, because the sensor, they ran it through that unit, through the duct and the ceiling, the ceiling is basically where I'm standing because there's no, uh, in between, uh, there's no ceiling tiles or anything. It's exposed duct and, uh, round duct and all that. And I would have to get up pretty high to find it. So yeah, the thermostat is in the room or in the back room. I don't need a sensor. I'm just gonna run a, a straight new thermostat without a sensor. It'll be cheaper for them and all that and, and we'll be good, so. And this, this puppy over here, it's running, not my unit, but uh, I don't know how much longer it's gonna run. Everything's cut, this is cut. Oh, this is cut too. Low pressure and high pressure, and it's running. It is cooling, sweating lines. That's gonna die soon, the cover came off too. All right, so now I can pack up all this. this is a, oh, I have to get up there, get my ladder back on my van, get my van, drive it back around because we got to get that corner on the other side so I don't have to come back here. Doesn't it go well with all the other blacked out bags? They do make this in a brown and gray and I, I just had to pay extra to get the blacked out version because I was like, man, all the bags I have up here are, are in that color. So uh, I do have a thermostat, think, thankfully. This is what we're putting in. This is what our supply house pushes. I've had no issues with them. Uh, we needed a two stage, do it the proper way. A lot of people around here do single stage and um, put both Y1 and Y2 on one terminal, on the single terminal. But we're gonna do it the right way, do two stage. So I carry a two stage, I carry another one of these at single stage for some of those units that we run into and then I have the fancy one that has a sensor but I'm not running the sensor. So yeah, we have, uh, we're gonna use blue for Y2. It's on the end over here, magnet tip. So now we can call for Y2. And now all our contactors are pulled in. All right, so it's been a few minutes and obviously if I kill the power, it stays on now. So we can take this off. And uh, that was just to get them cooling because it is extremely hot today and I had this off for a good while so uh, just to get them some instant cooling instead of waiting for the whole thing to jump to do the delay and all that You can uh, do that now. This has way more um, Uses and I think just for this because just for this you can use a little uh, Cheap little jumper that you have uh, In your bag probably to jump out and do that do it that way um, It's just cool that it has a little different tips there because uh, you know every uh, Every little board or terminal board is different. Some you can put an alligator clip on, some you can't. Some you can put magnets on, some you can't. Uh, and if you really can't get it, get into it, they do have piercing uh, tips. So alligator clips, magnets, magnetic tips, piercing tips where you can pierce these. And if you want, I would probably dab a little silicone on the outside if you're worried about it being exposed, but it leaves the smallest little hole, but you can, uh, Let's say you can't get in here or it's too close to something. You can just find the wire and tap into it and jump it out that way. Anything on the 24 volt side, this works, you know, on an AC unit, you have the whatever is coming from the board or from the thermostat, which includes pressure switches and things like that. Quick setup, training board is coming. Um, I basically just kind of put together something at the last minute. 
so I could show you a couple of scenarios where I think the Jumper King could have helped me on a couple of calls that I had where I had shorts on, on an AC system. And I'm gonna try and replicate those here with my board. And just to show you that this is connected to run a uh, contactor there. Let's plug this in. Let's flip on our breaker. Power the transformer, which gives us in turn 24 volts. If I check across common and R, so we have 27 volts all together. Now this right here is my makeshift jumper that I was using before. So I just wanna jump out the contactor really quick. Let me, let me uh, remove these jumpers so that I just have it going across one. So we're gonna go with uh, Y1 and R. Contactor pulled in, so it is working. Now let's kill power. All right, so now that we know that's working, we have our thermostat right here that I obviously have disconnected. Now, when I went to this uh, certain call, I had a blank thermostat, right? So that means this does not take batteries. So what that means is that I had no power to this unit, to this uh, 24 volt control. I reset it and the transformer, the little breaker right there, it's a three amp uh, breaker, kept tripping. So I had to go up and down a few times to verify what I was suspicious of. Now, everything is, is hooked up. I'm gonna plug it in again. We're gonna give it power. Right now it is uh, turned on. If we wanna check really quick, we have 27 volts again. So then, nothing's energized, right? No contactors are coming on. So then when I went to go put this, I mean, I didn't know what was going on right away. Plug this in, transformer uh, pops. That breaker was popping because of this thermostat. So if we remove the plate and we have our uh, jumper king, we can reset this. So we still have power. We go ahead and check again, just to make sure. 27 volts. So at this point, what I would have done if I had this, uh, this was a single stage, nothing too complicated. I could have gone up there, you know, power's on, but I took the faceplate off the thermostat. We can go to single stage, first stage right there. And then we can go to R. So right there, no power yet, you have control. So when we turn on R, that's energizing this uh, Jumper King right here. That doesn't mean anything is gonna come on yet. Now when you flip on whatever you're connected to, like Y1, our contactor pulls in. So if I could have done this, let the unit run, let the unit cool, and check temperatures, check a temp split, something quickly on there, on the roof. I could have verified a little quicker, gone back or covered up the panel, gone back and just replaced the thermostat. Okay, now, now we're not gonna use the thermostat. This one's no good. I do have another one, but I just wanna quickly show this is not an official training board video. We're just using it really quick. So I went ahead and swapped out the contactor for this one. Now with this one, well, let me give you a quick tip on contactors. Uh, if you have the coil, see on a two pole like this, the, the coil might be on the sides. So if you get a reading on either side, we're gonna go with ohms. Okay, we got ohms there. If you take a reading across the coil, uh, usually it's close to 13. This one's right at 12. That's fine. Now, if you come over to this one, 
you need resistance on the coil. So uh, if you are suspicious or you want to see if the contactors are good or not, uh, this is like if you have a low voltage short and you can't find it. If you check here, we have no resistance. So if you have little to no resistance, uh, you're going to have a short in the contactor. All right, so let's go back here, hook this back up. Now, like I said, I know this is bad, but we're going to put it, uh, set it up as if I found it on the job site like this. So we still have this hooked up. That's off right now. Let's hook up and let's see, let's see what, what trips first. We're going to put this down like this. So we're going to jump out R to Y1 for our contactor. So everything's off, make sure everything's off. We gave it power. Now let's try and get this contactor to come on. So we're going to go energize and then we're going to switch to cooling. Now the jumper king tripped. So this tripped before the transformer because I'm directly hooked on. So if you have an issue like this, uh, when I went to this unit, there were, there's going to be three contactors. There's going to be one for each compressor. It was, a, it was a two stage and there's going to be one for the blower motor. Normally I'm suspecting issues with the compressors, the compressors themselves wiring with them, or their contactors. Um, it was shorting out immediately because uh, I think they had the fan to on. So this was what kept tripping our um, transformer. And it was immediate and I had to go on there and I had to disconnect everything and check the coil um, resistance and find out that way. But if you're up there and you're not sure what's causing an issue, you can go one by one. So I would have been going to the blower motor first, that would probably be my first check is a blower motor because you can turn it on and off there. And then once you start, uh, you eliminate that if it, if it didn't trip on that, then you go to cooling and it might be something with the compressor. But there's the uh, little popper. So that's gonna be a resettable fuse basically, it's a three amp. So just like the transformer has a resettable switch here, if it does trip, that's what this has built in. Not all transformers have that. It's really nice when you do um, because you can kind of reset it and keep looking. Same thing with this, you can reset it, pop it back in and then you're good to go. You can uh, keep checking until you find out what is tripping your jumper king. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's just a look at the Subco Trade Fox Jumper King and how I would have used it, how I have used it so far on the couple of calls that I've taken it on. Cool tool, it's up to you if you think it's worth having. I've heard a lot of residential guys say that it's like a must have tool. And I think commercial guys will benefit from being out kind of stranded on a big roof and you might wanna have this in your arsenal. Like I always say, options are always a good thing. The more options you have, the better. So if you have this in your uh, tool bag, you, you can clip it on like I do. And uh, you can have a way to hunt for uh, low voltage shorts. Uh, you can check your cooling and heating without much issue. You can have control with these switches. The resettable fuse is really good for those low voltage shorts. And uh, it's a cool thing. So I'll, I'll keep showing it. Also, you guys got a sneak peek at my training board. So it's not at all what it's, what it's gonna look like. I have big plans for this. So uh, stay tuned, I'll be building this out. Give me a little bit of time. I'm gonna try and do this over the weekend, get as much hooked up as I can and have a really nice and ready to show some troubleshooting on things that I find in the field. So I wanna make sure that I do it differently than anybody else. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna be the best or fun or anything like that. It's just the way I would train somebody. That's the way I like to explain things. And then I'm going to be using actual defective parts that I've been saving. I have a whole bucket here full of them. So 
I'm gonna get this built out and we're gonna be checking uh, good and bad parts, telling you what the difference is. Like I explained the coil resistance on this because that's something that I learned not too long ago because uh, I didn't really come across a lot of uh, shorts in the contactor, but I have now. And that little trick helped me verify um, to, to pinpoint what the, the cause of the short was. So we have that. Um, I've already changed out like three of these for shorts in the T set itself. So we got that going. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys.